to hey everybody this is tommy g and pj and here we are coming to you again from downtown uh where are we tacoma tacoma washington that's right <laughs> pete and i just did a little breakaway got out this hunting i got that duck for johnson swanson pete we're now in the post johnson swanson era here the b wolves uh still on the road for a second two game series against the herbivores and as we fade out of this beautiful scenery here into the team picture, the team picture looks a little bit different now. Pete, there's two new players on the team. We started the season with uh, Kobe Kingman at first base, picked up a Laura Franco there, third from the right on top. And Johnson Swanson just played his last game a couple games ago. You see his new replacement, uh, three across from the left in the middle. That is Eliza Peck. <clears throat> Got her for under $5 million. She's our new B-. minus. <clears throat> catcher or backup catcher she'll she'll vie for the spot with with um steve mont stewart and we'll see we'll see how, how she does there yeah Liza Peck, uh, she's got good contact and so forth. Oh, i'm sorry go ahead talk i was just gonna say yeah i agree with you she comes in um she uh uh does not have nearly as much power and uh speed as uh johnson swanson but she does uh have a lot better contact and uh, her fielding and arm are much better than in Swanson's was uh, Johnson Swanson also known around the league as being an art. Um, and with our struggles in offense, unfortunately he just wasn't a good fit for us this year. So we decided to part ways with Mr. Swanson and we hope for the best for him, but, uh, and we'll keep an eye out and we'll see if anybody else takes a nibble. Like you say, uh, uh, Kingman, uh, Kobe Kingman's still on the free agent wire, so uh, we're we're still pulling for him too. We're hoping he'll land somewhere and be able to help uh, help a team, uh, you know, plus him up just enough to maybe reach the the playoffs. So, good luck to the two go. of them. Close the parting gift I gave Johnson Swanson that that two pound duck we bagged out there in, <laughs> in Leighton Lakes. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> Let's see here. So coming to the schedule, you can see where we're at. We got uh, one more here in Tacoma before we head home for a single game against the, uh, the Warblers before going back out on the road again. So it's going to be – it's mostly on the road uh, at this point in the season to try and catch up where we're at. And uh, just kind of checking these – well, let's we'll see. We got 12 games actually to, to report on uh, before we go – oh, maybe we should talk about – should we talk about the? We talk about the last game we just had first, or do we report on the games around the league? Uh, well, let's let's report about the on the, the the games around the league first, and then we'll talk about our previous game. All right, let's go here. Twelve games. The first game, Pete, the buzzards at the Blowfish. Let us know how that goes. Okay. <clears throat> um, it's back and forth, but the Blowfish win five three. Moose is at the Sirloins. Out there in the moose, been it ooh, wow. 10 to, 11 to seven moose. Moon stars in the burners. Moon stars jump out to a lead and are able to hold on and win four two. Our old freebooters visit the grapplers on the west coast, and the freebooters went eight three. The outlaws and the heaters. The outlaws take an early lead, but it's back and forth, and the heaters eventually take a ten five. The Houston Crocs go up to visit Arctics here in town. And the Crocs win at seven two. That was a game we were gonna see. Sand cats and the gold coats. And it's back and forth, and the Gold Coats take it 6-5 and 16. Platypi go out to Philadelphia to play the Freedom. The Freedom win at 6-3. Sirloin and the Jacks. Jacks take it 2-1. The Wild Pigs trying to regain play the Wide Loads back in town. 1-0 Wide Loads. Warblers in the Saw Teeth. The Warblers take that one 7-0. Waterville is still out in Hawaii. And the, and the, the Nemesis win their second straight against the Bullets 2-1. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The uh, well, uh, saw the Warblers, and they took that one seven nothing, and that's where that's who we're playing next at home. So, mm -hmm. taking a look at the Pioneer Conference Pathfinder Division, the uh, Burners have a one game lead with a record of ten and six, and they got uh, they are just out in front of the Freedom and the Moose, who are tied for second uh, with records of nine and seven. They are uncharted division right there after it. The Platypi are tied for first place with the Wild Pigs. The Wild Pigs started off solid and have lost a couple of games of late. Both those teams are 10-7. and seven. Uh, Down in the Journey Division, the Arctics are holding a half-game lead over the Freebooters with a record of 10-7. and seven. The Freebooters just behind them uh, with a record of 9-7. and seven, So, Close. 
over here in our Explorer Conference, the Seafair Division, first place Gold Coats are just a half game ahead of the Houston Jacks. Gold Coats are 11 and 5, the Jacks 11 and 6. Yes, sir. The trade division, uh, our own division, the, the uh, Nemesis hold a half game lead over the Herbisaurs, who will be playing today. The uh, Nemesis with a record of 10 and 7. Herbisaurs, a half game behind, as they said, with a record of 9 and 7. The B Wolves, 4 and 12. Uh, five and a half games out of first place. And then down the Curiosity Division, like you mentioned, Pete, the Warblers won their last game. They're 11 and 6. They hold first place there. They came ahead of the New York Wide Loads. For 10 and 7. Yes, sir. Well, speaking of games in the past, we could tell you a little bit about this last game against the Herbisaurs. Pete, we're coming up here hoping to hoping for maybe a split. The B Wolves took that first game, and uh, it was boy, it was fun to see. You know, it was all it's pretty much everything you hoped for. Uh, the B Wolves got started early in the top of the first with this double by Dexteras in the left field. Another four feet further, and that would have gone over the wall. I remember thinking we both thought that was out of here. And yeah. Then, uh, seen it bounce off. It's good to see Dexteris back in the game. It, it is. It is uh, nice to start seeing him uh, finding his stroke. Uh, and it'll be it'll be nice when we start seeing him uh, putting the ball over the fence. Him and Alora Franco are really due for him. Yeah. We weren't uh, we weren't sure what to expect on the mound. Deshaun Levon started the game a little shaky. He had a 17 point something ERA. Uh, and he, he walked sacks in the bottom of that same inning with four straight pitches. So we you know, we were a little bit nervous. But eventually, Sachs makes it all the way around to third. And then Juan Rojas pops a, a foul ball, a couple of foul balls down the first base line. This one's grabbed by Franco. But she forgets about the runner at third who tags up, and it's a, it's a tie game still in the first. Yeah, yeah. Just a, a lapse, a momentary lapse by Franco. Normally, she's uh, she's more on it than that. Yeah. I didn't even say anything about who scored the run for us. But anyway, eventually, <laughs> Levon finds his stride in the bottom of the third as he strikes out Herbisaurus, Herbisaurus pitcher slack off. But Annabella Stokes puts a damper on things in the bottom of the fourth with this single in right field, bringing another run in for the Herbisaurus and putting the home team out in front by one. It was just a short while later when Levon got his chance to contribute to the offense. With this grounder, he sent home to get banks, but Clark misses the tag and opts for the out at first, and the B-Wolves tie it up. Yeah, what a play. What a play. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there was the Herbisaurus getting out there first, and then we just tied it. I, my notes are a little bit different. Anyway, from there on out, it was back and forth affair, uh, mostly defense. And, and, boy, the Herbisaurus really can't play defense. But the uh, the B-Wolves pitching really ramped up their performance. We, we haven't seen a game like this from Levon yet this season as he puts away batter after batter, ending the day with five Ks. It was great to see. Yeah, it was. He, he was really lot. He got locked in. Um, and I think when he started the game, wasn't he? I think he was tense when he started out the game. And, and very quickly, uh, the tension is, seemed to ease, and he, he found a groove. And, and like Tommy said, he was just putting them away. Yeah, it could have gone one direction or another. It was going to be either be very bad or very good. And sure, sure glad it ended up the way it was. Uh, not to be outdone, then Tats Belfort comes in at the bottom of the eighth and racks up four of his own, two in the eighth, and two again in the ninth. It was a solid night for people's pitching. It was, yeah. It's it's uh, the pitching is really starting to come on, and it's it's nice to see. And uh, and as you said, uh, Deshaun Levon's our our, our four, uh, our number four pitcher, and we, tonight we've got uh, Hurley Bender, our superstar pitcher, going. So hopefully that that trend will continue. Well, in that last game with both teams locked up at two, the game goes into extra innings. Belfort adds to the offense with this single of his own to try and match Levon's performance. Then, with Belfort at second and Dexteris at first, Buster Biggs comes in and cranks this one down the first base line. And Belfort makes it all the way from second, and the Beebles take the lead again. Yeah, Belfort helping out his own cause. Um he winds up uh, with the win, and uh, he, you know, the the Beavers with four wins on the season, and Tats Belfour has uh, three of them. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's got three yeah. of them. So he helped helped out his own cause there. He does. Here he seeks insurance in the bottom of the tenth when he blanks Fiona Clark, and the game is all wrapped up on this high pop up in the center field by Hamster, 
Uh, the B-Wolves hold on to win a great game by a score of 3-2. to two. Yeah, like we said, Pete, uh, you and I had never seen uh, – we've seen pitchers go full games against us. We've never seen a pitcher go into extra innings. Yeah, yeah. They kept uh, Slackov in there through 10, and I was surprised. I was very surprised. <laughs> Well, looking at this game here today, this is game 17 of 44. The Beagles are 4 and 12. Like you said, the contact specialists going up against the Herbosaurus, extreme defensive experts. And again, we're not going to get many runs on the board, so defense is going to be key for us as well. So starting on the mound for the Beagles, the guy we need, and the guy we need to see great stuff from Hurley Bender, the right-hander, who you know throws the ball pretty hard, puts crazy movement on it, and is really accurate. Unfortunately, he's 0-3 on the season with 6-12 ERA and a 116 whip, so he's looking for his first earned victory. Yeah, and let's hope we can get it. Again, the uh, offense seems to uh, seems to keep uh, – well, both the offense and the defense don't seem to break away from uh, opponents. So, yeah, our starting pitchers have kind of got the fuzzy end of the lollipop, even when they come out. And if they throw a good game, um, the the decision tends to go to one of the uh, re- relief pitchers. Again, Tats Belfort. Um, although I think Fran japani has got the other victory, so and she is a starter, but she's the only starter with a victory. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, let's get out in front. Let's hold on to the lead, and, and let's, let's give Harley Bender a win tonight, I think. How about oh, our notable players? <laughs> I was just going to say, I'm, <laughs> I guess I'm done. Let me punch out. No, no. <laughs> For the notable players for the B-Wolves, uh, Alora Franco, the first baseman, she's got tons of power. She's got better than average connectivity, um, better than average speed. She's hitting 366. She's kind of cooled off the last two games and hasn't been hitting uh, as well as she had earlier on. But uh, she is uh, she's a force to be reckoned with. Hen- Henley Dexter is the superstar shortstop. He's got better than average power. Great ability to connect and a great speed on the base pass. He's hitting 290 with no home runs. And then uh, Buster Biggs in left field got great power, uh, better than average ability to connect and great speed. He's hitting 323 with three home runs, Tom. Wow. Yeah, we're hoping to get start to get some home runs from those other two notable players. You know, I think they're yeah. about due. Yeah, yeah. We were saying earlier, yeah. Uh, Franco and Dexteras are hitting the ball pretty much as hard as you could hit it. And they're bouncing it off the walls out there in the outfield. I, you know, I'd just like to see it get elevated another couple feet and get out over the wall. <laughs> That'd be nice. <laughs> well, the pitcher we're going to see on the mound for the Herbosaurus tonight or today, Jem Qualita, the right-hander. Uh, she's currently a little bit tense, but uh, she throws the ball hard enough. Doesn't put a whole ton of movement on it, but she's pretty accurate. She's 0-2 on the season with a 4.74 ERA and a 184 WHIP. So she's not. She's on paper. She's not quite as strong as as Bender, but she's doing a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. And the notable players for the Herbosaurus, you got Manley at first base. He's juiced, um, and he's uh, he's playing over his head. His power, his ability to connect, and his speed are all uh, exceptional. And he's hitting two twenty four on the year with two home runs. Stewart at shortstop is uh, a better than average speed. He's got uh, a great fielder. And he's got a great arm. He's hitting 322 um, on the season with a home run. And then Sacks in center field, we he saw a lot of work in that first game. Again, uh, his ability, his speed, his his fielding, and his arm are off the charts. He's hitting 317 with two home runs on the season. And again, being defensive experts, um, Manley's the only one really with the offensive stats. Stewart and Sacks are are notable, namely for their defense. Mm. Looking at today's starting lineup, the suggested lineup by the assistant coach is Hanley Dexteras at shortstop, leading off the batting order, followed close behind by Buster Biggs in left field, Elora Franco at first base, Steve Monstor at catcher, unless you want to make any change, Pete, but uh, Monstor has power against right-handers. Huh. Well, because we're playing the Warblers next, right? Yeah. Okay, so the Warblers are a first-place team. We did beat the Herbosaurs in the first game, so do you want to give Eliza Peck the shot? And then we'll bring in Monstour for the next game against the Warblers? It's up to you. Normally, I, normally I would think you just wait till the, the current catcher is 
not 100% well, but but if you want to bring her in, let's bring her in. No, yeah, let's do that. Let's 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 ride with Monster because I really want this game. Yeah. Um, we have an opportunity to really kind of get back, kind of get back in the hunt a little bit. Okay. And well, yeah, and this we'll is see a, Peck on the bench. She's got her jersey on, right? <laughs> and if the if it you know if it comes to that, she can pinch hit. She's a great you know she makes great contact. So true. She's got, yeah, she got better contact than Monster. If he struggles there, we can always right. Her. Billy LeBoyne can right field. Going to trail him at number is number five spot. Um, LeBoy has, I think, our most home runs of the season. He's tied to home runs with uh, with Buster Biggs. Gina Torrance playing second base today, as is usual. Bertha Banks at third base. Magic Moore in center field. And like we said on the mound, Hurley Bender, who hurls the forefinger, the two-finger, the cut finger, the curveball, and the slider. So yes. exciting stuff. Pete, you ready to go? He hurls Lights when go. he's on a bender. <laughs> <laughs> the light's flashing. You ready, sir? I'm ready, my man. Let's do it. All right. There it comes, Pete. It's a night, night game, game here. All right. Beautiful night here at the Emerald Diamond in Tacoma, Washington. Yes, sir. I want to rock and roll all night. Party every day. <laughs> and the lineup for the Herbisaurs is Sachs in center field, Stamberg in left field, and he's hurting. Hamster at third base, Manley at first base, he's juiced. Rojas in right field. He's uh, hurting. Stokes at second base is uh, Stewart at short. Clark at catching. And Jim Qualita pitching. Leading off in the top of the first. Hanley Dexteras, Buster Biggs, and Alora Franco. On the bump for the Herbisaurs, as we've said, Jim Qualita. I think this is a battle between number one pitchers today. Dexteras is hitting 290 with no home runs and an RBI. Beautiful night here today. The... Uh... The herbivore is going to be like a caged animal today, Pete. So you got to look out. Second pitch in there. Dexter decides to bunt to pack them out. Paulita picks it up, throws them out at first. One down. Wrong button. Buster Biggs <laughs> <laughs> hitting 323 with three home runs and eight RBIs. There's a smash to the shortstop. Picks it up and makes the throw to Manley to retire. Biggs. Number. Three pitches, two outs. Alora Franco's up here hitting 366 on the season. Two RBI still looking for her first long ball. Takes the first pitch in an inside corner. Strike one. No. Second pitch is outside. Ball one. Good eye there by Franco. Top of the first no score. She hits that one past the mound. And we're going to finally get a single here. With the third batter. Stokes keeping her honest. All right. Steve Montstour hitting 500 with two home runs and six RBIs. He's neutral and fit. He's catching today for the B Wolves. First pitch is outside. Ball one. One and oh, two outs in the top of the first. Allen's high. Ball two. Two and oh. Allen's up. Ball three. Three and oh. Allen's in there for called strike. Strike one. Three and one. Stokes at first base. That's. Oh, that's in there for called second. Three and two, oh. swing and a miss. Monstour goes down on strikes. Coming up in the bottom of the first, Yoink Sachs, Morton Stanberg, and Henry Hamster, Hurley Bender, going to come up and get to work, set up shop on the pitcher's mound. Yoink Sachs hitting 317, two home runs, 12 RBIs on the season. He's a stealer. He is a stealer. He's been known around the league as a stealer. It's in there for a called strike. That's why they put uh, they put safes in all of the uh, locker rooms. Mm -hmm. Personally, just to deal with the yoink sacks. That's fouled <laughs> off. No balls, two strikes, no outs. Low. That one's low, ball one, one and two. Bender with 22 strikeouts on the season. That one's popped up behind home plate. Monstour is back, yeah. makes the catch to retire Sacks. One out. The left. Morton Stanberg, the left Morton fielder. Stanberg. He's hitting 267 with uh, three RBIs on the season. One out in the bottom of the first. Bender delivers. That one's fouled off along the third baseline, which I'm glad because I got a lot of lag right there. <laughs> uh, no balls, one strike. That's in there for called strike. And Stamberg's in the hole, 0-2 oh with one out. That's fouled off. 
into the third base dugout. That one was high. Ball one. One and two. Bender throws a cut finger. That's in there for a call. Third strike. Stamberg goes down looking. That's two outs in the bottom of the second. Bender is starting to get the uh, engines revved up. Henry Hamster, the third baseman, steps in. He likes the high pitch. He's hitting 290. Swing and a miss with a home run and 10 RBIs. Hamster offers at the first one, but couldn't catch up to it. Allen's outside. Count is one and one to Hamster with two outs. That's in there for a called second strike, and Hamster finds himself behind. One ball, two strikes with two outs. That one was high. Ball two. Two and two. Bender delivers. There's a shot into left field. Beggs is on his horse. Is able to run it down for the third out. Billy LeBoint, Gina Torrens, and Bertha Banks going to look at Qualita in the second. She's thrown 12 pitches. She's got a strikeout and given up one hit. Now Billy LeBoint. Right Billy Hits 306 on the season with three home runs. He does. Likes to pitch in the upper half. Takes the first pitch in there. Strike one. <clears throat> Just misses by Paulita. So we're going to strike two. Closing in and getting ready to make our 15th pitch. She winds up, delivers. Oh. Inside corner, another strikeout. She's got two Ks and two innings here, Pete. Oof. <laughs> She's got some movement. Yeah. Gina Torrens, the second baseman. She's hitting 316 with no home runs and two RBIs. There she is. That's into the gap on left center. She's on her horse. She's going around to second with a stand-up double. Gina Torrens with a double in the top of the second. Way to lead off there, Gina. Yes. Bertha Banks coming up 250 on the season. Bertha's generally known for a little more power than contact. She hits that one down the line to third base. Stewart picks it up, and he's going to get get it at um, ah, gets Torrens at third. Banks makes it to first, Magic two down. Moore. Magic Moore hitting 261 with two home runs and five RBIs. He's playing center field for the B Wolves. That one's high, ball one. Bertha Banks at first base does not have a lot of speed. She's not a threat to steal. That one's fouled off. Moore. Takes the next pitch. It's high. Ball two. Two and one. Allen's high. Ball three. Three and one to Magic Moore. Allen's in there for a called second strike. Three balls, two strikes. Thank you, babe. And he walks. She walks Magic Moore on six pitches. You, you always sound surprised when they walk. <laughs> yeah. Harley Bender. Harley Bender's in. He's locked in and fit. Good power for a pitcher. Tears of well, first one down the right first base line, foul ball. Second one he hits to the mound, while he's gonna pick it up and end the side. Okay, well <laughs> they pick up another hit, but no runs. Coming up in the bottom of the second, Grunt Manley, Juan Rojas, and Annabelle Stokes. Bender threw 14 pitches in that first inning, and he came away with one strikeout. Now back, the first baseman, Grunt Manley. Gotta be careful here. Grunt Manley's sitting 224 in the season. He's juiced. He's got a ton of power, a ton of contact. Early Bender, looking good himself, getting ready to throw his 15th pitch, gets a signal from Monstor, delivers, misses, load inside, ball one, one and over the count. Bottom of the second, still no score. Second pitch in there for a strike. The outfield's going to play back for Grunt Manley here, who can do some real damage to the locked-in pitcher. Takes another pitch in there for a strike. He's a tough out, though. One and two, so Bender's going to have to get him chasing some. Luckily, Bender's got some junk. There it is. Curveball, but he smashes hard in right field. Luckily, it goes foul. Still one and two to count. Rack him up. Doom again, Pete. Wind-up delivery. Reaches out. Hits that one outside. Maybe he may run up the pitch count here. Bender getting his 20th pitch right there. Low fouls that one off, and it's going to be batting practice for, for Grunt Manley. Outfield's Still playing back. Wind up delivery. Fouls that one off. Jeez. The infield is going to go guard the lines. See what happens here. 22nd pitch. Misses high ball two. Two apiece. Manley 
working working him here. Jesus He's gonna tire, Christ. Tire out Bender. <laughs> Great contact hitter. Harry hits that one. Torrens dives but misses. He's going to get around it to second base. He's going to throw. It's not going to be in time. And it's a stand-up double after a bunch of pitches. <sighs> Jesus. <laughs> Juan Rojas hitting 362 for the season with three home runs. Popped up into right field. The boink's coming in for it. He's going to make the grab. Toss it to first base. Make sure that uh, the runner stays there. One down. Annabella Stokes. Second baseman and 189 this season, looking a little bit tense. Not, not much power at all. Okay contact. Let us be at second base. The pressure's up here, bottom of the second, with only one out. And a runner on second. Oh, there the throw goes into center field, and he's going to make it all the way home, Pete. That goes past Magic Moore, and they're not able to get it. And the run comes in, and it's one nothing herbivores and a bad throw from Bender to second base. Strike one, one, one at one. Better closing in on his 30th pitch. He's got two more to go. Two strikes on Stokes. That one's hit to Franco at first base. He's going to pick it up and toss it to Bender for the second out. Now batting the shortstop, <clears throat> Milo Stewart. Milo Stewart hitting 322. Good contact hitter. It's fair speed, not a ton of power. Bender winds up, delivers, curveball, and there misses. Ball one, one the count. Second pitch, outside corner strike. What a piece. 32nd pitch by Bender. High and inside, misses again. Ball two. Milo Stewart showing composure in the right-handed batter's box. It's another pitch from Bender. Inside, makes it, delivers, strike two. All knotted up, two apiece. There's that slider outside corner. He fouls that one back off the net. Still two apiece. Inside corner, swinging with strike three. Bender gets his first K there, and ends the side. But they put one on the board, Tommy. It's one to nothing, Herbisaurs. Uh Hanley Dexteris, Buster Biggs, and Alora Franco are going to get a second look at Jim Qualidez, throwing 25 pitches. Got two strikeouts, giving up a walk now and two hits. The shortstop, Hanley Dexteris. Dexteris, 0 for 1. He's a tough out and a utility player. Um, he's hitting 286. Takes the first pitch. That's ball. Ball one. There's a smash to the second baseman, Stokes, who pulls it out of the air for the first out. Buster Biggs up 0 for 1 on the day. Good power, Buster Biggs. Stand in the left-hand batter's box. Takes the pitch from Qualita. Swings and misses at a high pitch. 0-1 the count. Second one inside. Ball one. One piece. Evened up. Third pitch inside. Ball two. Good eye there by Buster Biggs. There's a pitch. He jams out to left field. Pete, it's going back. It's going back. It's past the warning track. Biggs is going to walk up to second base for a nice double. Way to go, Buster. All right. Nice hit, Buster Biggs. Stand up double. Laura Franco is one for one with a single. She's hitting 381 with no home runs and two RBIs. First pitch is outside. Ball one. One and oh. There's a smash foul along the first baseline. Evens up the count at one, one and one. There's a smash into left field. Everybody's going to hold up. Runners at first and third with one out. Steve Monstor stepping in. Steve Monstor has power against right-handers. That goes well against Qualita. He's throwing a 35th pitch right there. Takes that first pitch in there for a strike. Oh, one to count. Second pitch, ball one. There goes the runner for second. The hit and run. It's going to be picked up by Stewart, who's going to step on the bag and get the double play, Pete. He just happened to hit it right to the worst spot. Yep. Coming up at the bottom of the third, Fiona Clark, Jim Qualita, and Yoink Sack. Spender's throwing 35 pitches. He's got two strikeouts, giving up a hit. Herbisaurs with a no one to nothing lead. At this Catch. rate, he'll, he'll get 70 pitches by the fourth inning. Yeah. Fiona Clark, the catcher for the Herbisaurus. She's hitting 147 on the season with three RBIs. The pitch is in there from Bender. 0 and 1. It's a swinging bunt out in front of first base. Monster jumps out, picks it up, and makes the throw to retire Clark. 
Jem Polita, the starting pitcher. She's hitting 167 on the season. One out in the bottom of the third. Herbisaur is holding on to a one-run lead. That's fouled off along the third baseline. No balls, one strike. Qualita checks her swing, but it's called strike two. Qualita's in the hole, 0-2 with one out. That's popped up along the first baseline. Franco's out, makes the catch to retire. Qualita, two outs. Yoink sacks the center fielder. He's 0 for 1 on the day. 3-13 on the season with two home runs. That's fouled off along the third baseline. Into the tugout. Look out. 0-1. Bender delivers. Broken bat. Fouled straight back out of play. No balls, two strikes. Sacks is in the hole. Swing and a miss. And Sacks goes down on a strikeout. 0-2. for 2 today. Coming up at the top of the fourth, Billy LeBoyne, Gina Torrens, and Bertha Banks. Colita's thrown 37 pitches with two strikeouts, a walk, and four hits. The B-Wolves have out-hit the Herbisaurs 4-1, but the Herbisaurs are holling a one-run lead. LeBoyne's 0-for-1 today. Steps in. He likes the high pitch. Colita's going to deliver. That first one's in there for a cold strike. Strike one. That's a smash between the first and second baseman into right field for a clean single. Billy LeBoink is standing at first with nobody out. Yes, he is, Pete. Gina Torrance strolls up the bat, one for one with a double. Good to see Gina there on the left. Damn, batter's box takes a pitch from Qualita inside strike and makes it in there. Oh, one the count. Second pitch in the same spot, but further in. Ball, one piece, evened up. Top of the fourth, one up in Herbisaurus. That's her pitch, but she jams her. It's a foul down the third base line. One and two the count. That one's in there for the strikeout. Qualita gets her nut swinging. <coughs> she had two strikes? Bertha Banks. Yeah. Bertha Banks, 0 for 1, <laughs> hitting 243. Billy LeBoink still standing at first with only one out. That one's in there for called strike. Strike one. One out. That's inside ball one. One and one. Allen's low ball two, two and one to Bertha Banks. That's a smash down the third baseline foul ball. Evens up the count at two, two and two. There's a smash down the first baseline. <laughs> Just foul two and two. That's outside three and two, full count. Ooh, that's a smash to the first baseman. Makes the throw. Oh, and double play. Over to second for one, back to first for two. Three outs. Five hits for the B-Wolves. Yeah. Morton Stamberg 0 for 1. Henry Hamster 0 for 1. And Grunt Manley 1 for 1 with a double. Bender's at 43 pitches. Got three strikeouts and giving up a hit. I meant to say it was going to be a, a walk. <laughs> no. Morton Stamberg's in, coming in. He's he's well, not 100%. Looking a little bit tense. Normally power hitter. Let's see what he does here. 262 on the season. With no home runs, three RBIs. Takes his first pitch inside. Ball. Play Bender, his 45th pitch is a line drive to Buster Biggs in the field. One down. Yes, sir. Henry Hamster, number 10, 0 for 1. Likes his pitches in the top portion of the batter's box. Good hit. hitter. Gets a slider, low and away, misses. Ball one, one to the count. Second pitch he anticipated, and that one is gone, Pete. Deep, deep to left field. That's, oh, way in the back row. And Hamster jacks that one almost out of the building, 408 feet. The fireworks announce his second home run and 11th RBI of the season, and it's a 2 none Herbisaurus lead. And now you got Grunt Manley to deal with. He's one for one with a double. He took about a half dozen pitches from Bender last time he was at the plate. Bender misses on the inside corner, ball one. Second pitch, he anticipated, pushed it foul. The outfield's going to go deep again for Grunt. Third pitch, misses ball two. Two and one the count with one out, bottom of the fourth, two nothing herbivores. Early Bender throwing his 51st pitch. That's down the third base side and gets him in time. Good throw by Bertha Bank. He's all the way across the diamond. One. Wahan Rojas over for one of the day. Hitting 356 and three home runs. So Rojas is no slouch. He's locked in. Bender takes the first pitch. 
curveball outside corner makes it in. Strike one. We need one more out here for Bender to get out of this. No more runs. Second pitch to Rojas. Wow, he smashes it left down the first base side, but he's a whiffer. He hits that one to first base. Franco's going to pick it up, toss it to Bender, and end that side. All right, so they pick up a second hit and a second run. They're leading two to nothing with only two hits. Uh, Magic Moore got a walk last time up. Hurley Bender's 0 for 1. Hanley Dexter's 0 for 2. Qualita's thrown 50 pitches now and gotten three strikeouts this, this day. Magic Moore. Magic Moore got a walk out his first time up. He's hitting 261 on the season. Two home runs and five RBIs. First pitch he swings late. Strike one on the count. Second pitch is in there. He hits it hard. But Grunt Manley at first base dives over and then tosses to Qualita for that first out. Now batting, drop hitter. Hurley Bender, 0 for 1 on the day. He's neutral and fit. He's got no batting average so far this season. That one's outside, ball 1, 1 and 0. Top of the fifth. There's a smash, deep center field. I think Bender just left oh. the building, Tommy. Hurley Bender uh. goes yard, cuts the the lead in half 2-1 455 feet Bender's first RBI of the season way to go Hurley Bender yeah not used to seeing a pitcher take one out Pete no that was a good clean hit that was gone from the bat I mean you knew that inspiration for Hanley Dexteris now who's 0 for 2 on the day he takes his first pitch in there for a strike and it's a one run game Dexteris hits it hard but straight to Stewart at shortstop 2 down now batting Buster Biggs, the left fielder, he's one for two with a double, hitting 328, three home runs and eight RBIs. Two outs in the top of the fifth. Herbisaurs with a 2-1 lead. That one's in there. Uh, ball. That one's fouled off. Evens up the count one and one with two outs. That's a smash to the third baseman. Hamster picks it up, makes the throw to Manley to retire the side, but the uh, B-Wolves get one. Thanks to Hurley Bender, the pitcher. However, Sawyer is uh, leading 2-1. Coming up in the bottom of the fifth, Annabelle Stokes, Milo Stewart, and Fiona Clark. Bender's at 54 pitches with three strikeouts now on the day. The Stokes is playing Anna second Bella. base. She's tense but fit. She's 0 for 1 on the day, hitting 185 on the season. Bender delivers. That's in there for a called strike. Strike one. Bender oh. delivers. That's inside. Ball one. One and one. That's in there for a called second strike. Annabelle Stokes is behind in the count. One ball, two strikes with no outs in the bottom of the fifth. That's fouled off along the first baseline. Still one and two. Bender delivers. That's in there for a called third strike. Stokes watches it go by. Milo Stewart, the shortstop. He's 0 for 1 on the day. Hitting 317 on the season. That's in there for a called strike on the lower outside corner. Bender's at 60 pitches. That's fouled off along the first baseline, and quickly Stewart is in the hole 0-2. Bender delivers, and that's a ground ball foul. Just along the third baseline, Hurley Bender delivers, and that's hit to Dexteris, who picks it up, makes the throw. To retire, Hamster, Fiona Clark, the catcher. She's feeling well. She's feeling neutral and well. Um, she's hitting 143 on the season. The first pitch by Bender is fouled off along the third baseline. 0-1. Two outs in the bottom of the fifth. That's in there for Cole's second strike. And Clark is in the hole 0-2. That's hit to Franco at first base, who will run it herself to retire the side. One, two, three. Going into the top of the sixth, Laura Franco's two for two. Steve Monstour's 0 for two with a strikeout, and Billy LeBoink's one for two with a strikeout. Qualita's at 59 pitches with three strikeouts, a walk, and giving up six hits. And the Herbisaur is holding on to that 2 1 lead. Franco's got two singles on the day. He does. I saw Liza Peck on the bench there, Pete. <laughs> First pitch inside the ball. One to the count, top ah. of six. Oh, that's a line drive straight to Stokes, who's going to get her at first two for one on the day. One out. Now batting, the catcher, Steve Monstour. Steve Monstour, 0 for 2, hitting 469 on the season. 
He's got power versus right-handed pitchers. That one's outside. Ball one. One and oh. Swing and a miss. One and one. That one's low. Ball two. Two and one. That's foul along the first baseline. Just outside the line. That's full count. Three and two to Monstour. Smashed. The oh. shortstop lays out and makes the catch and throws him out at first base. Two eyes. That's good defense, man. It's, these guys are impressive. They are, Early yeah. Point, comes up today hitting one for two. Top of the six. He smashes that one, but straight to Manley. That's going to be number three. Whew. Jim Qualita. Yoink Sachs and Morton Stanberg all 0 for the day. Bender's thrown 66 pitches with four strikeouts and given up two hits. Again, Herbisaurs with only two hits, and yet they hold a one-run lead over the B-Wolves. Qualita, 0 for 1, hitting 143 on the season. 0 for 1. <laughs> for I don't know, 2-1, throws a curveball in there. <clears throat> Strike one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Pop up to right field that's going deep. Oh, and LaPointe can't get there. She's going to get at least two. She gets to second base with a stand-up double. And they're going to hold her up there to lead off. <coughs> Yoink Sacks, known as a stealer, looking to get on base. Stand the right-hand batter's box, looking at Bender. Swing and a miss, and high and inside. Bender looking for his 70th pitch signal from Monster no. gets it, winds up, throws it outside. Ball one, one piece. Pressure ramped up a little bit here. Smashes that one, that slider, down the left side, one and two. Inside corner strikeout. Way to get Sacks out of there. <coughs> Pardon me. Morton Stanberg. Morton Stanberg, 0 for 2 on the day, hitting 258, looking a little bit tense up there. Swing and a miss at that two finger outside. Strike one, oh one the count. That one's inside off the hands. Ball one. One one and one. Bottom of the sixth. Medium pressure situation with a runner at second base. Oh, Slider on. misses inside just off the hands again. Ball two. Two and one. Curveball makes it in there. Swing and a miss strike two. One more to go. Swing and a miss strike three. Gets a couple K's in a row, Pete. Looking good here in the sixth inning. <laughs> Hamsters. One for two. <clears throat> with that home run early in the game that almost left the park, Pete. Strike on the outside corner. Oh, won the count. He just needs one more batter. Oh, throws a oh. curveball, gets away. And they're going to go to third. The runner on, advances. Man. Now they're in scoring distance. Come on. A little bit of a wild pitch there. Getting ready to throw his 80th pitch. Inside corner popped up. It's more is going to come in. Oh. Oh, for that third out. I'll say the runner went. He's getting ready to throw it home. Whoa. Peace. All right. Coming up at the top of the seventh, Gina Torrens, one for two with a double and a strikeout. Bertha Banks, 0 for two on a day. Magic Moore, 0 for one with a walk. Colita is up to 68 pitches, got three strikeouts, a walk, giving up six now hits, but is still holding on to a one-run lead over these B-Wolves. B-Wolves, one, uh, Torrens, one for two with a double. She's hitting 322 on the season. That one's smashed to the first baseman, Manley, who picks it up. Man, flips it to the pitcher. Walido uh, is covering first for the first out. Almost made it down the line. Bertha Banks over two on the day. Not looking good for Bertha. She had some good power on those hits, and there she gets one to left field, but it's going to be flying oh, into the glove on. of Stanberg. Two pitches, two outs. Doing that thing again where everything I hit is going right at somebody. Magic Moore 0 for 1 with a walk. I don't think I've gotten any hits today. Okay, first one's in there for a called strike. Strike one, two outs in the top of the seventh. There's a smash to Stokes at, short, at second, who makes the throw to Manley. One, two, three, and we're out of the top of the seventh. Going into the bottom of the seventh, Grunt Manley, one for two with a double. Juan Rojas, 0 for two, and Annabelle Stokes, 0 for two with a strikeout. Bender's at 80 pitches, got six strikeouts and giving up three hits. Manley, the first baseman. He's an RBI man and a tough out. He's one for two with a double. Batting 232 on the season with two home runs, nine RBIs. That's a ground ball to Bertha Banks. She picks it up, makes the throw to first to get Manley. One out. Juan Rojas. 
the right fielder. He's hitting 350 on the season. That's fouled off along the first baseline. Owen one. Herbisaurs with a one-run lead. Rojas swings through that one and finds himself in the hole. Owen two. Rojas has the reputation of being a whiffer around the league. That's fouled off along the third baseline. No balls, two strikes, one out in the bottom of the seventh. Swing and a miss, and Rojas goes down on strikes. Henry gives him the thumb. <laughs> two out. Sanibel Stokes, the second baseman. She's tense. 0 for 2 on the day, hitting 182 on the season. Two outs in the bottom of the seventh. That's in there for a called strike. Strike one. Bender's at 86 pitches. Got 29 strikeouts on the season. That's fouled off along the first baseline. And Stokes is quickly in the hole. 0 and 2. Swing and a miss. And Stokes goes down on strikes. I'll tell you something. He's up around 80 pitches, but he's, he's dealing, Tommy. Hurley yeah, Bender, yeah. one for two with a home run. Hanley Dexter is 0 for three. And Buster Biggs, one for three with a double. Qualita's at 72 pitches. She's got three strikeouts, a walk. <coughs> giving up six hits. The starting pitcher, Hurley Bender, one for two. Hit that big home run his last time up. So far, he's the only one to do anything in this game, Pete. Defensively and offensively. Hits another home run, Pete. Over the left field wall. Oh, no, it's off the wall. He's running for second base. He's going to slide in there for a double. Pete, he's got a home run and a double. Are you kidding me? This guy wants this game, Tom. He wants, he wants to win. Haley Dexter is 0 for 3 with a hitting 278 on the season. Come on, Dexter. Get yourself another RBI here. Allen's in there for a cold strike. Strike one, top of the eighth. That's a smash to um, the shortstop who picks it out of the air. And Bender gets back to second. So one out. Boy. Buster Biggs up one for three. That's that's 0 and 4 for Dexteris today, Pete. Buster Biggs up there. Takes the first pitch out, second corner, strike one, nine mile an hour fastball. Higher pressure situation, top of the eighth. Throws to second. Ooh, way to get back there, Bender. 77th pitch is a hit past the mound. It's gonna go into center field. And he's coming home, Pete. He's coming home. He's got to slide in, and he makes it. Hurley Bender All ties right. the game up. Hurley, it's the Hurley Bender show. <laughs> he scored both runs. Okay, so we got a man on first with uh, one out. Bender has crossed, which ties the game at 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Alora Franco steps in. First two pitches are inside, 2-0. Oh. Franco with a smash into right field. Runners at first and second with one out. And Montstour stepping in. All of a sudden, we're getting a lot of offense here from the Beagles. Montstour is 0 for 3. Great time to go 1 for 4. He's got power against those right-handers. Good job not swinging at that first awful pitch. High and inside, ball 1. That one's outside, ball 2. And it looks like Qualita's starting to lose a little bit here. Ooh, oh, that was no. Could have been the ball. Hamster throws him out at first for two. We got runners in second and third. One more to go, Pete. Yeah. Runners at second and third with Billy LeBoink. He's one for three with a single. He likes the high pitch. Takes the first pitch. That's low. Ball one. One and oh. Two outs. There's a smash, and that's going to get one run home. Another run's coming around. That's in. And Billy yes. LeBoink with a. The base is clear and single. Holy cow, two, Gina Torrance. Two runs in, and it's a 4-2 lead by the Beebles. Gina Torrance is a great contact hitter. I didn't see what she was on the day. Takes the first pitch outside corner. Ball one with the boink at first base. Still two outs. Top of the eight. That one's hit hard to second it. base. But Stokes is going to get her out at first. Three down. Dang, damn it. <laughs> But the uh, B-Wolves put three on the board. So the B-Wolves with four runs, ten hits, and one error. The Herbisaurus, two runs on three hits. Milo Stewart, Fiona Clark, and Jim Qualita going to face Bender in the bottom of the eighth. He's thrown 88 pitches. But he's been uh, he's been dealing lately. He has. We'll have to see if he can stay in this. He's he's losing a bit. He's on fire, but he's losing a little bit of his, uh, his velocity. But still good velocity for a pitcher. First pitch, Mitch is inside. Ball one to uh, Milo Stewart. He's a good contact hitter. Not a whole ton of power. He hits that one. Line drive to Franco. Right in their glove. First out. <laughs> Fiona Clark 0 for 2. Looking a little bit tense. She's got more power than contact. Takes the first pitch under the elbow. Ball one. One of the count. Bottom of the eighth. 4-2. B-Wolves, Pete. 
on the road, threatening to win two straight. Gets the slider in there, strike one, one apiece. A few B-Wolf fans back there behind the home plate. That one high and outside, strike two, one and two, he's ahead. Let's see if he makes her chase junk here. He does, she goes for it, Torrance picks it up. Tunk, the one pump, tosses to Franco, two down. <clears throat> Jim. All right. The switch here. Jem Qualita. Oh, she's going to stay in. Good contact for a pitcher, Jem Qualita. Someone you definitely want batting for you. Slide, Bender decides to go for the slider to get her chase. She doesn't ball one. That second one is hit to Franco, who picks it up, tosses over to Bender. Three down, Pete. Bender's right. going for the full game. Yeah, that'll be good. That'll be good. He, yeah, he had a good eighth inning. Okay, so we're going in at the top of the ninth. Bertha Banks 0 for 3. Magic Moore 0 for 2 with a walk. Hurley Bender 2 for 3 with a home run and a double. Qualita's at 87 pitches with 3 no strikeouts. The third baseman. We Banks is tense. we got to assume the Herbisaurs are going to get one more at some point, right? Not if we lock them down, Tommy. That one's high. Ball 1, 1-0. One oh. Top of the ninth. That one's high. Ball 2, 2-0. Two that's in there for a called strike. Two and one. That's in there for a second strike. Two and two. There's a smash in the center field, and Sachs chases it down. One out. Now the center Magic Moore is stepping in. He's got contact against left-handers, but he's facing a right-hander. He's 0 for 2 on the day. Moore, the center fielder, takes his first. Ooh, reaches out of that first pitch. Hits it down the first base line. Foul. Only one to count. Top of the ninth. Oh, swing and a miss at a good at a good. But she's losing a lot of her velocity. Swings at a bad one there. 0 and 2 still with one out. Inside corner ball one just misses. One and two. That one's in there. He pops it up. That's gonna be Come number on. two. Shortstop range it back to get it. Hewitt pulls it in. Pete doesn't like it. No, I don't. I'm pissed off. Here Harley Bender's on fire and fit. Two for three. Home run double in an oh, RBI. Qualita's, Early Harley. <laughs> Qualita's leaving for Omar Chumbo. Chumbo comes in, the relief pitcher. He's uh, got an ERA at 3.21 and a 1.07 whip. Seven strikeouts on the year. He's neutral and fit. He's got about average velocity. His junk and accuracy are, are very poor. Uh, he throws a four-seam fastball, a two-seam fastball, and a curveball. Two outs in the top of the ninth. Hurley, Hurley Bender is stepped into the batter's box. He's hitting 200 with a home run and an RBI. Count is one and one. There's a smash to the center fielder. That's in there for a clean single. And Holy Hurley cow. Bender, I think, is three for three. <laughs> He's got to be the player, the star player of the game. I, yeah, you got to. You got to give it to him, both defensively and offensively. There's no way. Oh. The attempt to get him at first base misses. Hanley Dexter is 0 for 4. Hanley's got to get on the bag here. Hanley's looking a little bit tense there. Nope. First pitch drifts inside, corner ball one. One no account. Second pitch way outside, ball two. They're looking for they're looking for Bender to steal there. He's got a lot of speed. He can actually Very probably yeah. go ahead. Oh, there he goes. He's going to be caught in the rundown. Uh-oh. That's going to be it. Oh, he gets yeah. tagged out number three. Oh, gosh. No, oh, I shouldn't have listened. <laughs> Yoink Sacks, 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. Morton Stamberg, 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. And Henry Hamster, 1 for 3 with a home run. Bender's at 96 pitches. He's got eight strikeouts and giving up three hits. B Wolves leading 4 2 going into the bottom of the ninth. We need this game right here. B Wolves with a 4 2 lead. Four run. Uh, Leading four four to two. That one's fouled off out of play. 0 and one. That one's a shot to Alora Franco, who's going to make the flip to Bender, who's covering first for the first out. Stamberg, the left fielder's tense and well. He's 0 for three on the day. Hitting 254. That's in there for a called strike. Strike one. Bender going to work early here. That's a swing and a miss. Strike two. 0 oh and 2. Stanberg is in the hole. Bender just, that was his 100th pitch. And that's a slow roller to the pitcher, Bender, who picks it up, makes the throw to Franco for the second out. Two outs. Henry Hamster, the third baseman. One for three with a home run. And uh, Henry Hamster. 
Been 292 on the season. Two outs in the bottom of the ninth. That one's popped up behind home plate. Monster gives chase, but it's out of play. No balls, one strike. Bender's oh. locked in. That one's a, oh no. And that's no, no. A, a smash just out of the reach of the diving Torrens into right field. So base hit. Grunt Manley's coming in. He's neutral and natural, neutral and juiced. He's sitting 229 on the season. He's an RBI man and a tough out. That one's outside. Ball one. One and oh. That one's low. Ball two. Two and oh. Bender up to 105 pitches. That one's high. Ball three. Three and oh. Bender steps off the bag and uh, Hamsters has to get back to first base. Walks the, uh, the hitter on four pitches. Juan Rojas is 0 for 3. He's known around the league as a whiffer. He's neutral and, and well. You don't want to change him? Yeah, I do. That's in there for a called strike. Well, but strike gosh, one. I mean, he's, he just threw a strike, though. That's in there for a called second strike. 0-2 two, oh two to Rojas, who's a whiffer. And that's to Bertha Banks, who picks it up, makes the throw to first, retires the side, and wins the game. And Tommy... The B-Wolves had to go to Emerald Park and take two, and they just did. What oh a gosh. game. Holy cow. And then the way it was done, too, Hurley Bender getting a home run, playing a full game over 107 pitches. Yeah. Yeah. Crikey. Holy cow. Listen to the B-Wolves fans out there. <laughs> yeah. They are ecstatic. There is a lot of happy fans in there. Especially considering the Herbosaurus had a 2 none lead going into that fifth inning. Yeah. And from there, the Beagles turned it around. One within one in the fifth, and then a big three-run eighth inning. Well, Tommy, look at the, I'm looking at this right now, and I can't believe this. The Beagles, four runs on 11 hits with one error. Herbosaurus, two runs on only four hits. I to know. say Hurley Bender had himself a game is an understatement. <laughs> this guy... <laughs> Carried this team across the go the end zone. You know what I mean? Yeah. That yeah there were a couple crazy. A couple of people he had to carry too. Dexteris goes 0 for four on the day. Yeah. Team Monster goes 0 for four on the day. Bertha right. Banks goes 0 for four on the day. Magic Moore 0 for three. I mean, it was yeah. Biggs was two for four. He got one run in there. Franco three for four. She had a great game. LeBoyk was two for four. He was all right. Torrance yeah. got one hit. Early Bender three for four. With two home run, with two runs, a home run, an RBI. Yeah, and an RBI. Yeah. He came in hitting zero, and he's got leaving hitting two seventy three. Yeah. And then he, over on he, the herbivores, you got you know the old hamster gets a hit, Manly gets a hit. Uh, wait, hamster got two hits, Manly got a hit, and then Qualita got a hit, and that's it. In the a rest four hit game. Yeah, he hit. He threw a four hitter. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know. He's got to be a double star of the game. You have to give him a star for his offense. Three for four, <laughs> scores two runs, hits a home run, has an RBI. But then you've got to turn around and you've got to give him another star for the pitching. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's, Here we are. Look at the, tell me about that pitching, Pete. What do you see? I see Hurley Bender. He gets the win. He goes nine innings, full game. He only gives up four hits, one earned run, one walk. Has eight strikeouts. He gave up a home run. He leaves with an ERA of 4.76, and his record improves, Tommy, to one and three. All right. Hey. <laughs> On the other side, Jim Coleta, who's a solid, a solid pitcher for the Orbisaurus. She gets the loss. She goes 8.2 innings. Gets 10 hits off her, four earned runs. Throws a ball. Gets three strikeouts and one home run off her. She's got a 4.55. Five, five. A little bit better than than Bender's. Oddly, she's 0 and three on the season still. Oh, Chumbo comes in, throws just a few pitches, gets one hit off him, and he ends up 314 with a 2-1 record. Yeah. No surprise there, the players of the game, Pete. Tell me. No, sir. The first surprise of the game, our superstar pitcher, Hurley Bender. He goes nine innings pitched, gave up four hits, one earned run, and one walk. Wow. Henry Hamster, of course, the third baseman for the uh, 
A minus third baseman Herman Suarez. He goes two for four, gets that home run, big home run. Literally almost went into the water. Yeah. Uh, uh, with the RBI and the runoff that hit. And then rounding out the three stars of the game, B plus is Buster Biggs, the left fielder who's been playing uh, pretty solid lately. He goes two for four on the day with a double and RBI, and he scored a run. So, and here it breaks down. Yeah, I mean this is the this, sixty-eight <laughs> to thirty-two. Tommy with seven hits, a home run, three RBIs. He got five strikeouts. I wind up with four hits, one RBI, and three strikeouts. And boy, it felt like I was not even. <laughs> I wasn't even playing. It didn't feel. Uh, we all have those days. We we carry each other, brother. Brothers yeah, we too. do. <laughs> Goes back and forth. Like I say, I kept. Uh, it just seemed like every time I hit it, I was it, it the hot. I mean, hitting it hard. I was hitting the ball hard, but I was hitting it right at people. <laughs> it's like, oh man, come on. <laughs> but we take it, and that's the thing. That's the big thing. We took the win, and uh, we we uh, walked into when we came into Emerald. Diamond, uh, the herbivores were the number one team in our in our division, and yeah. we took two from them. So you know, I'll take that. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that that's the absolute best we could have we could have looked at. Look at the season standings just after this game. Yeah, we're now five and twelve. We're two hundred four five games back. We started off six. Now we're right. five because uh, again we we got to make ground on the nemesis, but. Uh, you both we played both the Nemesis and the Herbosaurus two times each. We beat the Nemesis what we split with the Nemesis. We beat the Herbosaurus twice. We're going to face both of those teams again during this season. Uh, both back in Phoenix. Yeah, yeah, and we're catching up to the Sirloins. So I mean, it, you know, we're only a game behind the Sirloins. So yeah. you know, we got it. We got our. Uh, we got to cut out for us, though, because we're playing the Warblers next, and then I think it's the Wide Loads, isn't it? Yeah, Warblers tied the third, a three-way tie for the most wins in the season. Yeah. Uh, we're going to yeah come home and play them. They're 11-6. and six. That's, a, that's a big – now, we faced the Warblers earlier on in the season, isn't that correct? Yes, we did, and uh, I believe we – We, uh, we did okay. We lost. We did, but that was the first game we scored. We actually scored six runs on them. Right. Yeah, they beat us uh, eight six. Yeah, we we went up on, a, on the mound against Barrett, and it looks like we're going against Tapia for this next one. Yeah, so we got the Warblers, the Wide Loads, the Overdogs. Then we get this. We get the our first game against the Sirloins. Yeah, first get really quick. Check the league leaders just to see where we're at the season here. Looking at batting averages, <clears throat> there is one. One uh, B-Wolf on there, Laura Franco. She's got a 400 batting average on the season. She did, she did well today. She's number one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh out of ten. Yep, yep. That, yeah, so, she's up there. Facing the home runs there, the Warblers got the third highest home runs. Edwin Chops actually yeah. tied for second. He's got eight home runs on the season. We have to look out for him. Good old uh, Filet Jones is up there, too. Yeah. Look at the Arctics, though. Yeah, they got they Savage, O'Connor, and Barron all with six. I'm looking at on base percentage now. I don't see any of the two teams up there. Warblers for slugging percentage. Edwin Chops again. So we have to yeah we have to keep an eye on on Chops. Chops. Yeah. Uh, talking hits. I don't see either team on that list. Extra base hits. Warblers. Edwin Chops. He's got 12 extra base hits. Boy, he's yeah he's. I can't believe I can't believe we're not up there for <laughs> extra base hits. We hit a lot of doubles. You know what I mean? Yeah. For pitching, Ash Lewis, twenty strikeouts. Ash Lewis. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's or still that, batting, right? Wait, bad. Yeah, that's batting. So that these are how many times these people have struck out? Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that's not. Yeah, Ash Lewis. He's a he's a cave twenty times. He's whiffed the play. <laughs> yeah, because uh, Filet Jones, he's got twenty one strikeouts, but he's also um, I think where was he? Yeah, he's uh, fourth on the list for home runs. So I think it's you know you live by the long ball or you die by the long ball. So if he's not hitting the ball, he's striking out. <laughs> on the next tab, this doesn't this doesn't surprise me. We got two players for caught stealing. Yeah, Haley Dexter's has been gunned down four times. Buster Biggs twice. Yeah, yeah, and he should. And like I say, neither of them are on the uh, 
the stolen bases, you know, the most stolen bases, you would think. Going to pitching, Tats Belfort is up there for wins. He's got three wins on the season. Only yep. one behind the leader, Bull Hackett. Of course, the Arctics. Um, earned run average and either. Oh, the Warblers, Nico Dickerson's got a .96 earned run. I wonder if he just hasn't played much. That could be. Wow, saves, though. Ryland Boyle for the Warblers. Got six. Six saves. Crikey. Smack Avery makes it on there. We got a good closer in Smack. He's number nine of the top ten. Yeah, but look at Rogan Balls has got eight. I mean, how do you get eight? <laughs> That's I know. That's like every time they brought him in, he saved the game. Uh, strikeouts. Oh, look. yeah. Strikeouts. Look at that. Hurley Bender with 30. Yeah. <clears throat> Start. Elmo Slayer at the beginning of the season was was ranked the top player in the whole league. And he's showing he's got 35 strikeouts, but Chuck Burbany, 37. Jeez, he's a K man. He's a K wizard. Trey Buchanan for the Warblers up there at 25. Pitching walks, walks in nine. Beavis Ortiz with none. Dusty Winter, 0.47. Hurley Bender, 0.7. Look at that. We got four of our pitchers. Yeah, lowest walks out of nine. Well, we don't we don't walk a lot of people though. <laughs> yeah, we don't. We, yeah, we don't. Yeah, that's true. We aim for the edges of the strike zone. We usually don't miss. Yeah. Sometimes you get them trying to throw, you know, chasing garbage. If you right. got a lead and you got a relief pitcher and their strike out the walk ratio, yeah, that's that's really pretty good. Interesting. All right. Wait, let's see here. The my team after this game. Okay, hold on. There's there's a few things to. To remark after the game here, let's see. We just won four to two. Our team received some trading bus. Uh, player development. It looks like you know, Buster Biggs looking to do some cross training, possibly. But these are all expensive stuff. Okay, eight hundred twenty. Yeah. Endorsement contract for for Benson Rushmore. Here's here's more interesting things around the league. The wide loads. The wide loads signed Pro Pierce, replacing Chiron Throne, the thirty year old. A starting pitcher for the for the New York Wide Loads was a B plus pitcher, eighty seven junk, sixty accuracy. He gets dumped. He was making eight six a year. He gets they said they pick up a three million dollar pitcher, twenty eight year old righty, C seventy four junk. I think they were just looks like they were doing that to make room for the salary, right, Pete? Or no? Well, I was gonna least, say I think you got it flip. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Flipped. I'm sorry. Yeah, Chiron Throne. Chiron. He's the eight yeah. million six hundred thousand guy, and it's that's the guy they picked up. So they're getting a plus nine on velocity, plus thirteen on the junk, plus twenty two on accuracy, which I think is going to be the biggest thing. Uh, he brings uh, a little bit more power and a little bit more ability to connect. So, yeah, wide loads. We were looking at uh, Maximilian Garcia. He's lowered his asking salary to five eight, or from five eight to five six. Yeah, so we'll keep an eye on him. Laura Franco feels. A little stiffer than usual. Oh no! So, yeah, she she loses seven on fielding from forty to forty-seven. So we're gonna we need to do something about that. She's a thirty-two-year-old first baseman. Oh um, no! Yeah, at first base that could be problematic over time. Yeah. Well, we poke Foster too. Now all of a sudden we're starting to do well, and all our our players are starting to go into the <laughs> toilet. Uh, right. The heat. Finally, starting to win and. uh Poke Foster's leg has started to cramp. Well, they put him on a bus. Get him out of here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, at the next live from the hive, we'll talk about that. We got one coming up. I think after this, not after this game. I'm not sure. I'm I'm drawing a blank. Anywho, wait. We just were. What's what's our what's our standing? Because we do it after every two games. We're five and twelve. That's after our next game. Yeah, we're five and twelve. Yeah, so before our next game, maybe we'll, maybe we'll be able to catch the Sandcats, the play to play play the Sandcats at home before the Warblers come to town. Possibly. I don't know. We'll wait. Either way, this has been a great game. Yes. So we'll let you go now. We're going we're gonna to hang out a little bit here. We may go hunt one more time, and then we'll meet you back at Phoenix to see the, um, that next game against the, the Warblers. And then until then, this is Tommy G. And this is PJ. And we're saying, celebrate the victory, but get out of here.